Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, welcome back. Uh, we're going to be doing assignment 12 today, linear versus exponential. Let's get to it. So I thought it might be a good idea to talk about uh, viruses. So let's talk about the regular flu. That's the one that happens every year. It's seasonal. And let's say it spreads at a rate of about one person to another person. So on day zero, just that one little girl is sick. Let's say we have one case of the flu. And then she spreads it to her brother or something. So then by day one, we just have the two cases of the flu. Then he spreads it to his buddy. And then by day two, we have three cases. And then you can predict the next day as before. So let's talk about the rate at which the regular flu spreads. To get from one case to two cases, we only added one case. To get from two cases to three, we just added one. So you can see that we have added one case each time. So it's a plus one, plus one, plus one. This is a little different from the new coronavirus. Let's say it spreads at a rate of about one person to two other people. So it would look something like this. Uh, so on day zero, we just have one case. And then on day one, that person has spread it to two people. So then in total, we have those three cases. And then each of those people is going to spread it to two more people. So by day two, we're already up to seven cases. That's what makes this virus so dangerous because it started with just plus two and then went to plus four and then it's predicted to go to plus eight and then we would have 15 cases. So that's what makes this so dangerous. It spreads more quickly. So the first virus we talked about, the regular flu, would actually be a linear function. Here's another example just to remind you. We have our y-intercept, which is plus 60, and then we have our slope, which is the letter m, uh, and the y equals mx plus b. So to get the slope, we have to figure out how do you get from 60 to 65. You can count on your fingers. It's just plus 5 to get from 65 to 70, plus 5, and so on. So that means our slope is 5. That's also known as your rate of change. It's just changing by 5 every single time. And that's what makes it linear. If we look at a different kind of function, uh, let's say we have 5 coins in some magical bag that's going to double every day. Doubling means we're going to multiply by 2. So I start with five coins, and then I multiply by two, I'm going to have ten. When I multiply by two again, how many do I have? Twenty. And then I multiply again. I have forty, and so on, until I'm very wealthy. Let's look at the rate of change. To get from five to ten, how much are you adding? To get from ten to twenty, how much are you adding? Well, it started with plus 5, and then I had plus 10. Then how do you get from 20 to 40? What do you add? 20. So this is a little bit different. I'm adding by a different amount every time. My rate of change is different. It's not constant. So let's look at our two different kinds of functions we're going to talk about today. On the left, we have linear. Linear has a constant rate of change. Constant means it's the same. What does constant mean? The same. So it's plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. Exponential functions do not have a constant rate of change. Something like plus 5 plus 10 plus 20. Different every single time. Let's say we had the graph versions of these. So my linear function is a straight line I can draw with a ruler. Exponential, I got a curve to it. It's not constant, it's going up by a different amount each time. This is exponential growth because it's going up. Let's say I had two graphs that are going down. Uh, the one on the left is not a straight line, it's gonna be exponential. This is exponential decay. Let's say you got a 64 on a test, and I said, until you do those corrections, I'm gonna cut your score in half. So 64 goes to 32. How many points did we lose from 64 to 32? I lost 32 points. I'm going to cut it in half again. So 32 points turns into 16. I lost 16 points and then 8 points. So because I'm losing a different amount each time, there's not a constant rate of change. It's exponential. 
for the one on the right. Let's say you had 100, and I said, I'm going to subtract 20, a point, 20 points every day until, I don't know, you tutor someone. So to get from 100 to 80, it's minus 20. To get from 80 to 60, it's minus 20, minus 20 each time. So you can see the one on the right has a constant rate of change, and that would mean it is linear. And the one on the left would be exponential. So exponential has a curve, so different numbers each time. Linear, straight line, same number each time. All right, let's do some practice problems. Here we have a table. Linear or exponential? Explain your answer. Either way, I know I'm going to be talking about whether or not there's a constant rate of change. How do I get from 10 to 7.5? You could probably do that in your head. I'm going to do 7.5, take away 10, and I get minus 2.5. I can do this again from 7.5 to 5. I subtract minus 2.5. So what do we think? Linear or exponential? Well, if you said linear, you're correct because there is a constant rate of change. Let's do another one. Similar kind of question, a linear or exponential? I don't see any numbers here, but I can count squares. We got two squares, then four squares, then eight squares. So what do we think, linear or exponential? Let's go over it. My rate of change can be found by uh, figuring out how to get from one set of squares to the next. So to get from two to four, I add two. To get from four to eight, I add four. So there's no constant rate of change here. That's exponential. If you said exponential, you're correct. Okay, let's do another one. I have a crazy looking table here. I don't really care what it says. I'm just looking at this word, exponential, and this word. And then explain just means I have to mention the constant rate of change. So here's how we figure this out. Uh, I want to know how do you get from 220 to 280? So try subtracting that. What do you get? 60. Okay. So what do we think this is going to be, linear or exponential? Well, if I figure out the next change, it's 70. So because it's a different amount, there's no constant rate of change, exponential. Okay, let's do another one. This one looks like a lot of complicated words, blah, blah, blah. I just need that word right there. Linear. Which one of these is linear? I even gave you the rate of change. Take a second, pick a choice. Which one is linear? Okay, if you said choice one, you're correct. That's the only one that had a constant rate of change. This was different, this was different, and this was different. Good job. Okay, let's do another one. I'm looking to see which one of these tables, just looking at the y values, is a linear function. So take a second, pick a choice. That's the linear function. Okay, if you said choice one, you're correct. That's the only one that has a constant rate of change, which is plus seven, plus seven, plus seven. Okay, a word problem. So Caleb says that the table below is nonlinear. If something's not linear, it's exponential. They could have just said exponential, but they're rude. So we have to do two things, state if Caleb is correct and explain. So what do you think? Is this going to be linear or exponential? Here's how I do it. To get from 2 to 4, it's plus 2. To get from 4 to 8, plus 4. To get from 8 to 16, plus 8. So Caleb is correct. It's not linear. It's exponential because there is no constant rate of change. All right, one more. This one's a little tricky. So a population that initially has 20 birds approximately doubles every 10 years. Which graph represents this population growth? So take a guess, and then we'll go over it. Okay, so here's how you do it. When they say doubles, that means multiply by 2. Anything that's being multiplied by 2 is going to be an exponential function, so I get rid of that linear function right away. 
doubles also means that our amount is increasing, which means going up. So any graph that's decreasing or going down can go. Initially has 20, so between choice one and choice three, which one starts at 20? That would be choice three. And that's linear versus exponential. All right, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.